Senator, if I'd ask the indulgence of the committee member, Senator Tellis asked to attend uh, the funeral of a dear friend, and I'd ask the indulgence of the committee to allow him to go first, and then we'll go through regular order. Senator Tellis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. He's actually a highly decorated Marine who died just shortly after uh, he retired, and we're going to be over at Arlington, so thank you for your indulgence, and I, I will try to be brief. Uh, Dr. Wilson, I look forward to voting for your confirmation, and I fully expect that you're going to be confirmed, and we need strong leadership. And in, in a time when uh, we just, we were in a committee hearing yesterday where we had three lieutenant generals tell us uh, that we only have four out of over 50 squadrons that are at their highest level of, uh, of uh, qualifications. Uh, we're more than 1,000 pilots short. Uh, about 800 of them uh, are fighter pilots. I could go down the list. We've already talked about the smallest Air Force in our history. So when you think about those deficits, they're deficits in what is the smallest Air Force in history and the oldest. So uh, I appreciate your courage and willing to take on this task. We need to hurry up and get you confirmed so that people can hear the chairman's uh, concerns about a CR that doesn't give you the certainty to start fixing some of the structural problems in the Air Force and all the lines of service. So I appreciate your courage in taking on the task. I think you're eminently qualified. I'm going to briefly touch on a parochial issue, but I'm not, I'm not going to ask you to... Uh, uh, to uh, respond to it uh, last year, and, and I, have to, I have to agree with the chair, something that I was trying to do at Pope Army Airfield, a place where, uh, uh, Sen where Senator Reed has a lot of uh, fond memories of the green ramp, um, it has a unique mission in the Global Response Force. Um, and I, I was trying to do something that I don't think the chair liked, and he's probably right, and that was to really fix uh, the 440th down there, because I do feel like a physical presence down there is important to account for all the other kinds of things, weather, illnesses, mechanical problems, the way that, that they're trying to uh, help uh, fulfill the training mission down there for the 82nd Airborne. Um, but I, I think on reflection, I realized that I almost became a part of the problem, because what I was doing was a legislative fix. What I was doing was constraining what you all need to do to optimize uh, the resources and complete the missions and support, in this case, uh, the mission down at uh, Fort Bragg. Um, but you, we really need feedback from you uh, in terms of the things that we have done in the past that would take the, uh, the 440th and put it in the, on the top of a list of six other places that the Air Force deemed were more appropriate reductions that they could do to meet their cost-cutting goals. In other words, BRAC and a couple of other uh, legislative actions that would have been similar to the one that I was trying to take, those sorts of barriers need to be removed. Uh, are, 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 can I get your commitment to go back and look at things that Congress has mandated um, on the department that you think are not helpful and actually hindering you being able to achieve the other mandate that we give you, which is reducing costs and optimizing. Can I get your commitment to fairly early in your uh, tenure to go after these things and tell Congress they need to act to, uh, so that we can help you achieve these efficiencies that we're also expecting you to achieve? Senator, I, I'm very happy to work with you on those kind of mandates, but I'll, you know, I'll, I'll just... There are a lot, and, and you know, uh, Dr. Wilson, we can, uh, we can absolutely uh, give you the, ex the specific use case of what resulted in the 440th decision as an example of things that we've got to change if we're really going to put you in a position to succeed in your mission. That's the last thing I'm going to talk about. That right there is actually something that started in the Air Force about 10 years ago. It's a 680-page RFP for the next generation handgun. It started in the Air Force and then went to the Army. It took 10 years to complete, and just over the last year, 39 pages, incidentally, are all the pages that are specifications. But almost 700-page RFP to define a handgun. That doesn't make sense to me. In fact, we should probably already be iterating through the next handgun. Can I also get your commitment on acquisition reform uh, that we start figuring out why in the hell we spend 10 years and eight, 700 pages for the next generation handgun and go look at that and maybe, maybe work with me to figure out how we can streamline it and to what extent Congress has to get involved to do that? Yes, sir. Thank you. I look forward to your confirmation. Yes, sir. I thank you, uh, Senator Tillis, and it brings to mind the 
incredible injection of enthusiasm, reform, and intellect that the newer members on both sides of the aisle have brought to this committee.